Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is Gert Klopp, who's the country manager at AMG Graphite, who are a leading global supplier of high purity natural graphite, operating its own mines and Bertie integrated production facilities. Uh, they were founded over 100 years ago um, and have always been synonymous with the outstanding raw materials expertise uh, with production sites in Europe, Africa and Asia. Uh, apart from uh, being the country manager of AMG, Gert is also the chairman of the board of the Chamber of Mines for Mozambique. So he's going to tell us a little bit more about AMG Graphite, um, the history of the company, um, give us an update on the, the graphite market um, and what the Chamber of uh, Mines in Mozambique um, and the role he plays in that. So that's welcome, Gert, to the podcast. How are you doing, Gert? Very well. Nice to be at the podcast. No, and I appreciate your time. I know you're an avid listener uh, of the uh, podcast. Um, so as you know, we always ask the, our guests to tell us a little bit about your career, about your background, uh, before we go into talking about um, AMG Graphite. So yeah, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, Rob. Well, um, I'm I'm born and raised in the Netherlands. I studied business economics at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. I started my career at a, a tech company. I didn't start in mining. Um, obviously, we, we don't have much mining uh, in the Netherlands. So I started working at a company called Global Cooling. And the company uh, is in refrigeration technology energy efficient, environmentally friendly um, refrigeration technology. It still exists. It's now a, a part of the uh, BioLife uh, company in the US. It's, it's part of a listed company making low temperature um, lab freezers. But at the time it was very much an R&D startup company and um, aimed at, at licensing technology. So it was more of a, an intellectual property business. And I started on, on the business development side. And it, it was a great start for you know, a, a recent graduate. I, I traveled the world. We did a business with, with big companies, licensing the technology. And then gradually, I moved more towards the, the legal side of the business. So the negotiating license contracts for the, the technology, drafting the contracts, and I found that that was something that I really enjoyed doing. So I decided then after a, a number of years, and in those years, there's a year as well that I, I worked in the US at the, the US branch of, of the company, but then um, I decided to uh, go back to university, did that uh, part-time, so next to, to the job, and study law. So I did a master's in international business and, and trade law. And then in, in 2005, I decided it was time for, for a change, for a bit of adventure. And I went to Mozambique and uh, on, a, on a sabbatical, and I ended up you know, really enjoying the country. It's a, it's a, it's a great country. It's a great, great place to be. Um, so then, yeah, uh, at, at some point you have to, to go back to work. And that's when I joined a, one of the big five legal firms in, in Mozambique in the capital Maputo. And when the owner after two years or so, sold the company. I started my own firm with one of my colleagues. And at the time, and it was, I'm talking about 2007, when I started the, well, let me put it this way. We 
um, work mainly for foreign investors. So foreign investors coming into Mozambique, helping them set up, helping them start a, a company and do their legal work. And uh, the main sectors at the time were tourism, forestry, agriculture, and, and also mining. So I ended up doing a, a lot of mining work. I, I headed the, the mining department of that, uh, that law firm that I, I mentioned. And um, that's how I got involved in, in mining. And then one of my clients was, was AMG Graphite. And at some point, they asked me to become their, their financial director. And half a year later, they asked me to, to become their country manager in, in Mozambique. And this was you know, in really in, in the startup phase. So it was quite a small operation at the time. So that's how I, I gradually shifted then from, from doing legal work to general management in, in mining. And obviously you're there, you're still there today. So it's been been quite a few years that you've been uh in the country manager's role. Um so I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about uh, obviously your time with the company and also the the he I suppose before then the history of AMG Graphite. As I mentioned, they've been around for over a hundred years. So I wonder if you can just give us a, a, a brief snapshot of the company. Right. A AMG Mining is um, originates from, from Germany. So they have a, a mine in a small town called uh, a village, uh, Kropfmüll, which is near Passau, near the, the Austrian border in, in Bavaria. Uh, that's the, the traditional German um, graphite area. It, it started way back with just farmers uh, digging up graphite just from, from the surface. Um, so the the roots of the company go back more way more than a hundred years, but officially, formally, as as a company, the company is uh, more than a hundred years old and and mining for for more than graphite for more than a, a hundred years. So um, I, I was there last week. They their mine is underground, and um, it's 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 fascinating. Um, to see it's quite different from our operations here in Mozambique. We have a, a, an open pit operation. Um, so the, just the, 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 the amount of planning and, and uh, the, the geological details of following those, those graphite seams underground is quite fascinating. Um, I'm not a geologist. Uh, yeah, I have a business and legal background. But it was nice to, to see and... Um, yeah, so the company uh, has a very long history and, and a strong focus on on graphite. It's part of a, a bigger group called AMG Advanced Metallurgical Group. So that's a, a specialty um, minerals group that is listed at the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. And AMG Graphite, like you said as well, um, is has locations in very or subsidiaries in various parts of the world, including uh, China, Sri Lanka, where it mines uh, vein graphite, and um, in Mozambique. In Mozambique, we started in two thousand nine, um, setting up the company, and I, I must say I've been privileged to to have this quite a unique experience to be involved with this company uh, in, in Mozambique from the very beginning. So from, I set up the company, uh, you know, on, on the legal side and we got the licenses. We did the, the obviously the, the geological work, the feasibility study, then we got all the, the, the licenses, permits, environmental licensing, the financing part of it, the the renovation, the rehabilitation of the processing plant, because the, the Ankwaba site where we mine is a, a brownfield site. So we, we renovated and expanded the, the the plant there and then going in production. So uh, that, that spans, you know, we started 2009, we went into production 2017 and now 2023. 20, so that's, like you said, a, a, a long time. But um, quite interesting to be involved in the the entire process from you know from the very start to to running a, a graphite mine, 
Um, in Ankwaba, we that's that's up in the north of Mozambique. So it's in, in Cabo Delgado province, which is two and a half thousand kilometers from where I'm sitting now in the capital Maputo, which is all the way in the, the south of, of Mozambique. We've got about 115 staff uh, at the mine, uh, only two experts. So the others are all Mozambicans and most of them are from the district. So we try to hire locally as, as much as we can. And then we export mostly to, to Germany, so to the, the parent company who do further processing and then the graphite goes to to their um, end users, the mainly industry in, in Europe. So graphite has all, all kinds of applications in not just the, the, the electric, um, or the batteries for the electric cars, which is, uh, you know, uh, get quite a, a bit of attention, but since AMG Graphite has been in, in the market for, for so long, it, it serves a wide range of, of customers from you know, the, the pencils that are wide, well known, but also uh, lubricants, insulation material, uh, brake linings, um, you know, brush, um, um, carbon brushes for, for electric motors, fire retardants. There's, uh, yeah, graphite is a component in, in so many uh, products that it, it's just a, sometimes a small component, but it's many times quite uh, essential. You you have it in your car, you have it in your your phone. In fact, there's more graphite in in um, batteries for electric cars than lithium ion, for example. So it's uh, it's quite a an, an interesting mineral with a, a lot of a lot of applications. I wonder if you can give us an update on the operation in Mozambique. Um, obviously, you mentioned you've been in production since 2017. Um, so I wondered if you could um, give us an update on what's happening uh, at the site sort of during 2023. Yeah, so the, um, the, the production plant has uh, an installed or name click nameplate capacity of, of 9,000 tons. Um, so what we produce is it's an open pit mine and then we process it in the processing plant uh, and um, our product is graphite concentrate. And that concentrate is, um, we put it in, in one ton big bags, containerize it and ship it uh, to Germany via the, the Pemba port. So we're, we're 100 kilometers from, from Pemba, which is also the provincial capital in, in Cabo Delgado. Uh, or alternatively, we also use the Nakala port, which is a bit further south uh, along the coast in Nampula province in, in Mozambique. Um, I wonder if you can give us an update on the uh, graphite market overall. Um, and I suppose looking looking more from a worldwide perspective. That's a, a, a difficult question for me. I'm not sure if I'm the right person to answer because I'm in, in the very lucky position that we, we have an offtake agreement with our parent company. So pretty much all that we can produce is they, they then take and they sell then after further processing and further you know, um, they, they sell that into the, the European market. So I don't have any any direct information on 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 you know worldwide development of the graphite market. Got you. Now I understand. No, that make that makes sense. But I suppose from what you know of in terms of what you do in the graphite market in Europe, um, I wondered if you had any any information of current current trends and the uh, environment within within the European market? Sure. Well, the, the, the European market seems to, to, to soften a bit, but that's on, on short term. Um, obviously, long term, there's a lot of gra interest in, in graphite. Um, and, and in general, um, you know, we, we met at the, the mining in Daba, and you know, all the talk of the day was the the energy transition 
and the expected increase in in demand for for critical raw materials and graphite is on on that list both in in the EU and in the United States as as one of those critical raw materials so the definitely i think the the, the long term prospects for for graphite are quite good yeah certainly um, obviously, I mentioned in the introduction that you're the chairman of the Chamber of Mines in uh, Mozambique. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the Chamber um, and the role that it plays in the development of the mining sector um, in Mozambique? Yeah, sure. So the, the, the Chamber of Mines of Mozambique was uh, founded in 2011 to, to really defend the interests of the industry in, in areas as legislation, infrastructure development, uh, labor, of course, labor issues, um, best practices in, in mining and health and safety, so social responsibility. And last year, we were able to uh, to set up uh, a secretariat with two full time staff members, and that's on on the back of a project that we had with the Chamber of Commerce of of Chemnitz in Germany, and with them we did a, a project that was funded by the the German federal government. Um, you know, to 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 grow the chamber and to to make it the contact partners for company. Companies in in the Mozambique and mining industry, uh, especially also towards more uh, sustainability. Um, I think as you you've also seen in Cape Town, um, there is um, of course a lot of interest in in countries like Mozambique in order to um, diversify the supply of raw materials um, or or the sourcing. If you look at it from you know, either a European uh, perspective, and um, but also there there is a trend towards certification, and you know, companies and, and governments want to know, okay, where are our our minerals uh, coming for and uh, coming from, and how are they mined, and is that done sustainably and in accordance with you know, human rights? Um, so it's it's in in that light that we were getting this support from Germany. Um, the program was last year. We're now discussing the extension of of that program, and we've got about sixty members now. They range from you know, small artisanal mining associations to what are called mega projects here in Mozambique, such as the the Kenmer heavy sense mine in, in Moma, Nampula province, and Vulcan's uh, coal mine in, in Tet province, which used to be Vale. So we, we covered uh, the range. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got uh, since last year, uh, October, a uh, new board, seven uh, board directors and I'm on that, I was elected as the, the chairman of the board of the, the Chamber of Mines. Um, I want to talk about artisan in mining, but first of all, I just wonder if you can give us the, the current state of the mining industry in Mozambique. Well, large-scale mining in Mozambique is, is a relatively um, a, a young industry. Of course, there's been artisanal mining um, I've, I've read as far back as at least the, the 12th century, as far as they can tell. Uh, gold mining, obviously, is, is, is one of them. But as of um, 2000, um, the extractive industry only accounted for 0.2% of um, Mozambique's nominal GDP. And the way the statistics are done in Mozambique, extractive industry also includes oil and, and gas. So it was small. And part of that is, of course, coming out of um, a civil war, um, which ended in, in, I believe it was 92. Um, so the, the conditions then in the later part of the 90s, beginning of 2000, started to become more favorable. 
and um, during the past two decades, then the, the the mining industry or the extractive industry, it's not just mining, but also gas then grew to about 10% of the GDP in, in 21. And um, obviously it's a big driver of, of exports, uh, a generator of, of foreign currency as well. About 32% of, of exports, exports are uh, um, generated by the extractive industry. And the, the formal part of the mining industry in Mozambique employs uh, over 10,000 workers directly. Um, now, I think we, we I believe we're, we're just at the start. Um, it's, it's a young industry. Mozambique is a big country. Um, Mozambique is more than three times as big as the, as the UK. Now, of course, um, I, I looked it up. It, uh, it's not nearly as big as Australia, but but still, it it is a big country. And um, currently, Mozambique is is producing um, coal, both thermal coal and coke and coal, uh, titanium minerals. So the heavy sands um, are, are quite big in Mozambique. Uh, natural graphite. Um, Mozambique has, has big um, reserves of graphite next to our company. Uh, there's also the Australian company called uh, Syra Resources. We're also part of the, the chamber. And then in, in recent years, uh, gemstones, so the rubies from, from Mozambique um, uh, are, are hitting the market in a, in a big way. And then there's other um, raw materials that are on the, the critical list of the, the EC that um, can be found in, in Mozambique. So beryllium, bauxite, cobalt, copper, nickel, rare earth, minerals, tantalum, and, and vanadium. So, um, of course, we've got our challenges as well. One of them is that, that we've got so much interest in Mozambique, in, in the mining industry in Mozambique, that the mining cadastre can't cope. And um, interestingly, the uh, the mining cadastre and the, the National Institute of Mines um, have are, are now producing a summary of um, of their activities and, and on as far as licensing go. And um, I think it's it's quite commendable that they that they do so in terms of transparency. Um, the results are not not so great, uh, or at least they can be be improved. And just to give you a quick quick overview, um, there's um, at the moment two thousand about two thousand seven hundred licenses that have been granted and that are are active. But there are furthermore almost the same number two thousand and six hundred licenses pending and that that's all types of licenses now if you look at for instance mining concessions which is the the type of license in mozambique that allows you to do actual mining um there's there's 331 that are, are pending uh, and um only 14 were issued last year and that so that's for people for companies that have done their homework, you know, most of these licenses follow a, a, a prospecting license. So people have verified what's in the ground and decided that uh, it's um, feasible to to start a mine. And now they have to wait. You know, so it's it's bad for companies. Some some companies or, or some license applications are already older than, than 10 years. Imagine having to wait more than 10 years for your, your license. Uh, is that company then, is it still interested by the time it gets the license? Does it still have the resources? Does it even still exist? And that's from, from the company point of view, but as a country, it's also, it's a lost opportunity. Because those those areas are locked up. The, the, the areas that have applied been applied for, they can't be. You can't do any prospecting. You can't do any mining until you've you've got your license. Obviously, so they're they're locked up, and people that were willing to spend money 
can't do so because they they don't have the title. And worse even, probably um, illegal miners might come in and, and start working there. And then there's no revenue for, for the country. They're obviously seen... Um, so that... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, there's, there's a, a delayed reaction in the uh, internet. I was going to say there's, there's um, obviously a lot of opportunities within Mozambique, it seems, They've obviously just described, and obviously there, there's uh, obviously some red tape around the licenses. Um, what opportunities would there be for international foreign investment into the country? Um, obviously, with what you've just described, there's obviously a lot of delays with these licenses. What what can mining? What can foreign investment do for? Mozambique, the Mozambique mining industry. Um, there, there are as as I mentioned, um, there's a, a big variety of of minerals. Um, Mozambique has a, a very good access. So, in in terms of location, it's it's strategically located at the coast. It has a a long coastline, about two and a half thousand uh, kilometers on on the Indian Ocean side of Africa. So, in terms of um, just being able to export the the product of his, the depending, um, maybe I've got my graphite head on and I, I'm thinking bulk, um, but um, it's uh, also has the advantage of of neighboring South Africa. So, in terms of uh, being able to to draw on on the established um, uh, infrastructure and the in, in terms of suppliers also and the the know how um, we we benefit a lot from from that from from South Africa it's, um, a lot of the supplies and a, a lot of the also the services come from from South Africa so that can support the the mining industry. Um, in in Mozambique, um, yeah. So all all of these areas, um, you know, graphite, heavy sands, um, coal is a bit more controversial, of course. But um, there's there's big reserves of of various minerals that uh, are are available, and of course, um, yeah. If if big investments. Um, are, are are coming that might be uh possible to to accelerate and get get the interests also of of the ministry to maybe uh accelerate the bureaucracy a bit um obviously we mentioned artisanal mining i just want to even give us an overview of what is happening within the country in regards to artisanal mining uh, uh, last year, the, the first ever census or survey of the artisanal mining industry in Mozambique was published. It, it was a, a joint work by the, the Ministry of Mineral Resources and Energy and the, the Institute of uh, the National Institute of Statistics. And um, the interest, the, the 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 findings are quite interesting. I mean, I'm, I mentioned earlier that the formal part of the mining industry employs over 10,000 people. Well, the artisanal mining sector, they employ, according to the survey, uh, 461,000 people in mining directly and uh, another 346,000 uh, in, in the supply chain. In, in Yeah, so the commercial and, and services part, people that are supplying those uh, artisanal miners. So it's it's over a hundred thousand people that earn their living in that in in the artisanal mining supply chain. So that's enormous. And um, because you know Mozambique has probably about thirty one million inhabitants. So I read in in the newspaper today that uh, in terms of the the, the gas uh, fields. Uh, the, the, the natural gas activities in Cabo Delgado, which are being developed, that they uh, expect that that will generate 10,000 jobs. But if you compare that with those you know, 
800,000 in artisanal mining. I mean, that's, that's, that's huge. So it's, it's very important for, for the country and, and for, for Mozambicans. And interestingly, uh, they found that only 4.2% 4, 4 of those artisanal miners has a license. So in other words, 95.8% of artisanal miners are mining illegally. And only 12% of them were inspected or monitored by any kind of authority in uh, 2021, which is the year that the survey is supplied to, applied to. Um, and in, in terms of value, it's, it's a, they found it's a, a $21 million US dollar industry. So it's, it's also quite substantial for, for Mozambique. Now there, obviously then there's also, there's, there's issues, problems, which is the high incident rate. Uh, in first place, the, the, the collapse of mine shafts, of, of tunnels, uh, very limited use of personal protection equipment. Uh, in the survey, they found that only 17% of the, the miners use personal protection equipment. Environmental issue, especially around uh, gold mining, the use of mercury, and and also child labor. So even though it was, um, you know, self kind of self reporting, people f uh, filled out a, a form. Still, even though you know, obviously child labor is illegal, they still reported um, over five thousand children working in the artisanal mining industry, which. So in reality, it, it must be more. And then the survey didn't mention the, the taxes that um, were collected, probably because um, the, the must be very low, given that um, most people don't have a license to, to start with. So they, they may not be paying the, the taxes. So that is um, there's a lot of work to, to be done. And we've uh, done. Uh, some interesting work last year with the Chamber of Mines and in the context of the uh, project with the Chamber of, of Commerce of Chemnitz in Germany that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, we have organized workshops both in Maputo province, also in, in Tet province in the center of the country, where um, yeah, we've, we've done workshops with the, the Ministry of Mines, also the Labor Inspection, to, to, to teach people uh, artisanal miners on on health and safety matters on on women's rights on environment and I think that's that's important also in again in the light of, of certification and you know uh, certifying your supply chain um big companies will be able to do that on on their own but there's a, a big segment of the mining industry in in Mozambique that you know, will will need help at least you know to be able to export to to Europe, for example. Um, uh, you know, we see that coming that they they need to be certified and they they need to show that they're doing things by by the book according to whatever European standards. And in this case, so I think um, the the chamber has has a big role to play there to to help also the authorities with better manage the the artisanal mining uh, sector to make sure that the, com the country gets its revenues and that things are done properly in terms of the environment and, and human rights and and those things uh, you recently spoke at the Mozambique mining and energy conference um and you're going to be speaking at the Mozambique energy industry summit next month uh, which will be in uh, June 2023. Um, can you share some of the uh, some of the news and topics at these events? So obviously the event that you spoke at and the upcoming event. Sure. Yeah. The the, the most big mining and energy uh, conference was uh, last month. That's a, a recurring one, I believe. Uh, it was the, the ninth time. So it's it's been a, a long running conference. And it's it's an interesting platform where yeah uh, there's, a, there's a good showing of mining companies. It was a very good turnout and also participation, strong participation from 
the the authorities. It was opened by the the president of the Republic of, of Mozambique, and um, several the, the mining companies made several points um, around the the need to to reinforce the the infrastructure. Mozambique still has a, a an infrastructural deficit. Um, a number of companies also made the case for a, a more level playing field so that all companies are, are transparent in you know what they produce and the taxes that they're paying to make sure that everybody um in the end properly reports their their production and and pays their their taxes uh there was a discussion uh, around coal mining as well in in the terms of you know what role should it play or can it play in um, the the energy uh, generation of Mozambique? Mozambique um, is blessed with uh, a lot of hydro uh, potential on on the Zambezi River, um, but there's also uh, the legitimate question of okay, we're, we're shipping the the coking coal. Uh, for exports, uh, mainly to India at the moment, and you know some of the thermal coal that is not exported, you know, do we just let it go to waste? But it's that's a big and and a bit of controversial discussion. Um, and then the um, the upcoming conference is the Mozambique Energy and uh, Industry Summit that was held last year for the first time. So this is the, the second year. And this time it will not only be in Maputo, but also in, in Cabo Delgado. And in Cabo Delgado, um, well, we as the chamber will be be present at, at both in Cabo Delgado and in, in Maputo. And in Cabo Delgado, there will be a session on uh, industry parks. And that fits in with the discussion around the um, the local content and how the the country uh, and and its population can benefit from the the mining industry. Um, that's a, a big discussion. It was a big discussion at the the mining in Daba as well. It's like okay, now you've got this rush for the critical raw materials, and um, that's all fine, but. You know, as as Africa and as Mozambique, how do you, yeah, you know, how how do you benefit from that other than you know, the stuff is they, they dig up the the minerals and you're left with the proverbial hole in the ground, and um, <clears throat> Mozambique uh, doesn't have a lot of industry, so it's a bit difficult to 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 see, you know, um, the the minerals going into to industry. And, and do further processing. Um, it's it's very much a desire politically to to do that, but a a more um, a quicker approach or an easier approach is to look at the supply chain and to um, move more of that supply chain for the mining industry um, nationally within the country. Now, um, in in Cabo Delgado. They are planning, and uh, when I say they, it's the provincial govern, uh, government together with uh, a company called Moss Parks to set up industrial parks and link them to the various mining companies, uh, including one in, in Aquaba district where we are. And that's based on the success story of the, the Beloluan Industrial Park, uh, which is owned by Moss Parks. And Beloan Industrial Park is um, was set up originally to support the the Mosul uh, aluminium smelter in the outskirts of Maputo, and that's maybe twenty years uh, over twenty years ago. So originally, uh, it, it's it started as an industrial free zone for suppliers that were supplying the aluminium smelter. But then gradually, uh, it, it started attracting other business, and I think the just the, the other business is actually bigger now than the part that is uh, supporting the, the aluminum smelter. Um, so an industrial park has now also been set up at, at Kenmare in, in MoMA, their heavy sense mine, and they're trying to replicate that in uh, in, in Cabo Delgado. And I think that's a, it's a very good concept because obviously, I mean, you can legislate and trying to force it on, on companies, 
but companies, mining companies that is, have actually have an interest in having their supplies on their doorstep, uh, just sh short supply lines rather than having uh, your supplies coming from Johannesburg at, at two and a half thousand kilometers uh, distance on you know, bad roads. Of course, I mean, you, you want your... Um, your supply is close by and if if that can be like uh, the starting engine for uh, a local in, uh, industry and, and create local employment, it's good for everyone. It's good for the country. It's good for the, the district where you are and it's it's good for the company. So um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that discussion at the, the Mozambique um, Energy and Industry Summit uh, uh, at the end of the month in, in Capital Garden. You mentioned, uh, obviously, local content. I wonder if you could just expand on that and also let us know what your thoughts are around that. Yeah, look, um, like, I, like I said, um, you can try to, to force it on, 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 in this case, the mining industry by, by legislation. And there is some, to some extent, there is legislation in, in place um but if if there is no local industry um what you end up doing is is just that you're 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 just putting another markup on on products that are produced outside of your outside of the country then now they they have to be imported by a Mozambican company they mark it up and now it's it's local content but it's it's not really local content it's just a local company that is is doing the the imports so that's that's why i'm i'm saying um the the industry parks uh, on based on this model of the beloluan industrial park and and mozal where the the mining company in this case is really like the the anchor or that attracts the initial investments where you then build on and and create this infrastructure or this 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 environment where where you have enough critical mass then to to start growing but you you need to start somewhere and you can't just create um a, a whole industry out of nothing a, a lot of these cases also the yeah since the mining industry in Mozambique is young obviously also the the whole supply side of that the the, the supply chain is is new you, you and and a lot of equipment is not made in Mozambique so if you're looking to now source parts you can't I mean you can source them but typically they're not made in in Mozambique someone else will import them for you so I I really believe in in a pragmatic approach where um you work together to create a a supportive an environment and have this you know benefit that goes both ways and lastly what's the outlook for amg graphite over the next sort of six to 12 months and um, also if there's anything else that you would like to uh tell or tell our audience um we're we're looking at at optimizing our our production um yeah it's probably no secret um when i say that that the last few years have not been been easy um covid of course but also the the related uh, or following logistical uh, challenges that um, we had in container transport the instability in in kamlogano province that it looks like um it's it's uh, well from what we can see is a lot better so from from our point of view we're we're maximizing we're looking at maximizing the production and even increasing it beyond um what uh, what was originally uh, installed yeah really appreciate your time in give us an update on amg graphite tell us a little bit about mozambique the current uh 
current environment for mining companies there. So really, uh, really appreciate your time in sharing uh, sharing your story and, and give us and giving us an update uh, on the country. If our audience wants to reach out to you, if they've got any questions, if they've got any queries, how can they go about doing that? Are you on social media at all? Yeah, I, I am on, on LinkedIn. So uh, look for Geert Klok. That's G-E-E-R-T-K-L-O-K. There's no Cs in the, the Dutch clock. Or via the Chamber of Mines, which is cmm dot, um org.mz and I, I ask you to put that in your show notes so I'm, I'm sure people can find me yes yeah, it makes it easy easier for people to contact you so yeah we will include those um so uh, really appreciate your time all the best for the rest of this year um and those that are listening um hope you enjoyed that episode understanding more about the mozambique mining industry um and obviously um, us discussing uh, AMG Graphite, which is a 100-year-old company, and they're still going um, and still producing graphite for the European market. So um, appreciate your continued support. Please share this episode amongst uh, people within your networks and also people outside of the mining industry to obviously educate those that are not in our industry, um, showing that we are... We are essential, we are needed, uh, mining is needed, and um, to help obviously educate those that are not in our industry. So until next time, happy mining. Thank you for listening. Remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, happy mining, helping each other to improve the mining industry.